Look at the sea and the resources it provides to people is clear. Healthy beaches, fishing, and clean water. For many, this is paradise, but when mistakes, misuse, or natural changes break the ecology of the oceans, science provides solutions for our fix. Like a doctor healing a patient, repairing the gulf starts with a diagnosis. If you don't know how it works, you can't fix anything. And if you don't have observations, you can't even begin to ask questions about why things are the way they are. USF oceanographer Dr. Bob Weisberg has developed a network of monitoring buoys that track the water circulation on the West Florida Shelf, movement that can be life or death for some organisms. We're about 60 miles off the coastline of Florida at a specific location that's critical for buoy observations. We're at a spot where the shelf water drops off to the outer shelf, an area where nutrients from the deep water come up and move into the shallower coastal areas. Very important spot for acquiring data. Dr. Weisberg would like to expand from 3 to 12 watchful buoys because they're not enough to cover the blind spots concealed by the sea's vastness. Computer models help fill in the missing data, but they must initialize with a snapshot of the big picture. The only way you can really figure out what's really going on is to make observations, run models, ask questions, test hypotheses, and see what works and see what doesn't work. Um, that is the scientific method. And that method works. It helps predict seasonal red tides. Models replicate the loop current. When it pushes near the dry tortugas, red tide will be low. Weisberg's team even forecasts the success rates of spawning grouper, or oil slick movement, based on its forecast position. The Florida Institute of Oceanography routinely sends out vessels like the RV Weatherbird 2 to install and maintain the observing network. USF physical oceanographer Jay Law jumps ship to strip the electronics before it's hauled on board. He's in charge of swapping out the buoy. Okay. So we always take anything that sticks out, like the wind sensors, we take that off on deployment. So if it's rough, we damage the sensor, just keep it safe. You can imagine the environment is harsh. Shackles, chain, hardware, corrosion is quick. Each year the sites are recycled, and like buoy C12, many get damaged from below and above. Lightning struck. Uh, that's lightning. actually, Light. wind sensors don't like lightning. Yeah. <laughs> The buoy has been giving us good data for a month, and now we know why. The buoys are set up with weather sensors, and others look down through the water column. It looks downward, measures the uh, water velocity every meter, all the way down to the bottom, or just off the bottom. Uh, it's got three CTDs, which are conductivity, temperature, and depth. Uh, one is right on the buoy, so it gives us the sea surface temperature and salinity. The Weatherbird crew marks the spot and coordinates the next drop. Over it goes. The heavy chain sinks 50 meters. FIO provides the infrastructure for understanding Florida's economically essential natural marine resources. These coastal observing systems shine light on solutions hidden in the dark. I'm meteorologist Mark Collins for the Florida Institute of Oceanography.